Hey, what's up? How's it going there? It's Yasser here today, and you're not going to want to miss this video. So I'm going to show you what has been happening in the cryptocurrency market from a DeFi and EVM compatible layer one chain perspective. However, uh, to understand all of this, I have to cover a brief history of how everything got started on Ethereum. And right in front of me here, I have this draw pad, and I'm going to try to illustrate this using my mouse. So it's not going to have the best drawing, but we'll try our best, okay? So this was Ethereum, and let's say it's back in 2020. And that was when the first few waves of DeFi applications was introduced to the market. And these are things like, these are dApps like uh, Uniswap, Curve Finance. Uh, I think Yer Finance was one of them. And I remember when Yield Farming first came out, uh, that was really hot in the market. And uh, it got hot really quick because of all the investors, like they would get this huge amount of yield percentage from farming a certain token on uh, using this uh, yield farming application. So following the introduction of this first wave here, uh, what happened was other project teams, what they would do is they will come in and clone the project. And these are kind of known as like copy project. And uh, one of the first very highly controversial debated topic was SushiSwap. So when SushiSwap first came out, it was a clone of Uniswap. And I personally have no ill intention uh, regarding SushiSwap as I use it. But I remember it was, there was just so much controversy over it. But eventually what happened was after this, there was all these project teams that would come over and copy all these DeFi applications and cloning them and changing parameters and sometimes, you know, adding additional features to the project. So all of this was happening on Ethereum and eventually Ethereum got too congested. So while all this is happening, there are other layer ones and layer two chains. So layer one, I'm going to just put them on the same thing. So what was happening was they built an EVM, which is Ethereum Virtual Machine. And what this allows the, the other blockchain to do is that it is now EVM compatible, which means that projects on Ethereum can now be built on that other chain. So an example here, this DeFi dApp here can now be built on the other chain using the EVM. So what happened was cross-chain bridges would move over from Ethereum onto the other chain and they would build there and eventually become known as cross-chain bridges. So I'm going to just say bridge. Right, so bridge. And um, what that does is that allows assets to move from Ethereum to the other chain. So with the bridges built, this made it really easy to move assets from one chain to another chain. And how most cross-chain bridges work is that it locks one token on one chain. Uh, let's say on Ethereum. So if I'm using Ethereum, uh, it locks the token on Ethereum it creates a wrapped version of that token, basically they wrap it, and they use that token on a different network. So once assets can be transferred using bridges, then DeFi applications rushed in, right? So now, earlier I did this here, but basically that's them coming over. Now it's the same thing. Now after bridges are built on that EVM on the other chain, DeFi applications like DEXs, um, there's popular ones like um, lending, like money markets, there's yield farming, there's a bunch of them. So they would come over and build on this other chain. And the reason why they do that is because now they have an access to a whole bunch of new users and a whole different ecosystem that they can um, use. And basically what they would try to do is they would try to capture part of that market from this ecosystem here, right? So again, 
It's a whole new network and you know what they typically do is they provide some high yield rates and that's going to capture a lot of users to use it there. And eventually when this happens, you know, after seeing the success of that, other new EVM compatible chains also become built, right? So there are also more layer ones, more layer two that becomes built and they have they have or they are EVM compatible. And it's like they repeat. And basically projects, some of the project projects that move over from Ethereum to the other layer one compatible chain will do the same thing. They're gonna move over to the next EVM compatible chain and the process just it goes over and over and repeats over and over again. So, you know, in this example, if another EVM compatible chain comes out, I'm gonna do layer one or layer two. The reason why I say layer one or layer two is because um, typically layer ones out there that's outside of Ethereum, they're typically their own native chain. And then layer two is some type of scaling solution that's built on top of Ethereum, uh, basically to scale it. And a lot, like basically they're both like, uh, they can both run, uh, have smart contracts developed on top of it. So that's why I say layer one or layer two. Uh, for example, Matic is a good example of this. Matic is a layer two solution, which is also EVM compatible. Um, there's Harmony, uh, it's also layer two. Uh, it's also EVM compatible. And then layer one, great example is uh, Avalanche, there's Phantom, you know, a bunch of them, right? And when a new chain like this comes out, uh, DeFi applications will move from one chain to the next chain. And what they would try to do is attract the users. Basically, they're selling users from one chain to the next chain and onto the next chain. So yeah, that's basically what's happening in the market right now. So let's recap all of this together here. So what happened in this space was, you know, the first wave of DeFi dApps was dApps like um, Uniswap, where they're DEXs, and then there were yield farming and such like uh, yearn finance and money markets and lending like Compound and Aave. So I would say that they were like the first wave of uh, DeFi dApps that were introduced to the market. And, um, you know, hey, uh, actually, an, an additional thing that just uh, came up on top of my head uh, since we're on that DeFi topic, uh, something to keep on your radar, too, is the need for stable coins. So what some DeFi applications or DAS, what they do is they allow the users to mint stable coin, normally by providing another token as a collateral. However, you know, it gets tricky, right? There's going to be some uh, rebalancing configuration or things like that involved. Um, this is to keep the stable coin peg. And, you know, this is going to be uh, an, a whole different another video if I do decide to talk about it. And, you know, basically I'll save that for another day. Now, back to what we have in front of us here. Um, the second wave of DeFi applications is basically utilizing the cross-chain capabilities. And as I keep mentioning in this video here, basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to capture more users from jumping from from Ethereum onto the next EVM compatible chain and then onto the next EVM compatible chain and then onto the next EVM compatible chain. So it doesn't always go like this. It could just, you know, like that. And then Ethereum could, you know. So that's what the cross chain bridge allows. It allows assets to move from one chain to another chain. So by observing everything that I have mentioned here, um, I hope that you could kind of see a trend of what's happening. Basically, there's a pot of gold from one chain. It moved onto another chain to capture that pot of gold. And then when there's another new EVM compatible chain that comes out, then there's a new pot of gold over here. So it's moving from here to here and then capturing more markets in the other ecosystems. So. In 2022, uh, what I do suggest is uh, taking the time to increase your knowledge of EVM and start reading about what's happening in the entire EVM space and also seeing what DeFi projects are doing. Um, again, you know, they're, they're trying to go into other ecosystem and capture users, which there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's a creative way to create some usage in the entire blockchain space. Uh, what's also something really cool, uh, this is a... Uh, aside from DeFi projects. So game projects, 
now game projects are starting to become cross-chain dApps too. So basically, they're, what I'm trying to say is they're starting to utilize the cross-chain capabilities that has been shown on these other DeFi projects. So I think that that's going to be uh, something to keep an eye on, you know, as uh, more games move into this cross-chain capability in 2022 and so forth. Now, that's all I, I got for today. I hope you like this video here, and I hope you can see what's happening in the entire EVM and DeFi space. You know, I, I do think EVM-compatible chains are going to be very, very important in terms of cross-chain capability. Now, yeah, again, that's all I got for today. And uh, please like the video and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.